What is up guys? Welcome to Random Select Daily number 2. For today I decided to do Game of the Year so far and what I mean by that is that uh, Game of the Year this year I feel is going to be very strong and uh, I've played quite a few games already that I know is probably going to be on my top 10 list if not my top 5 list and uh, I kind of want to talk about the game so far instead of trying to review each one because I've played them quite a while ago uh, I don't want to give something that I might forget or I might you know, not be able to kind of tell exactly why I like the games uh, as much. But I know what I can do is I can kind of explain a little bit so far of why I feel these are good games and why they deserve some recognition. And uh, yeah, I'll just go from there and kind of, this will also be for me when I want to do a game of the year at the end of the year today, or this year, I will remember the games that I actually played. I remember uh, last year, what, what game was it? There's, I think Mass Effect 3 was the game where it's like, I remember liking playing it, you know, I wasn't that affected by the ending, and it was just a game that, like, you don't remember these quarter one games, no matter how good they are, and uh, I ended up bumping Mass Effect 3 to uh, number two, I think, on my list last year, behind Sleeping Dogs, and uh, yeah, so basically, I just kind of want to talk about the games I've played so far, and uh, go from there. So, first up, we have Nino Kuni. And uh, Nina Kuni is a game JRPG that had, I think, by level five, I want to say, and uh, in cooperation with Studio Ghibli. And uh, if you don't know who Studio Ghibli is, uh, I'm not the person to ask because <laughs> I never watch any of their stuff. But basically, Studio Ghibli is very well known for a lot of their animations and their shows. They have a very unique style, and uh, their their shows are very good, from what I hear. I've never watched them, and I do want to watch them though. And so yeah, so Nina Kuni is a JRPG in cooperation with them, and the the world is so beautiful. The graphics are awesome. You know they're, you know they're not of course realistic, but they're they have its own style. Its characters are fun, uh, and its gameplay to me is really good. The gameplay was one of the best features of Nina Kuni to me, and that's surprising because when I first got Nina Kuni. Uh, I was expecting to love the story and tolerate, or tolerate's a bad word, but like, and, and, you know, understand the gameplay. I don't know how else to say it. Like, I'll be okay with it, you know. But in the end, I loved it. Like, they had this movement to it where you can actually move in a JRPG rather than stay there and get hit. You know, you're, the speed of your characters actually mattered and uh, all this kind of stuff. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of strategy. If you actually watch someone play it, it's a very... Uh, involved game like you have to stay active you have to make sure you watch the bosses and see if they're not doing any major attacks so you can defend or maybe you want to switch classes or switch monsters because uh, they're weak to it or they're strong against a, a creature you're fighting and then you, of course you have you know you have to try to catch them and all this kind of stuff there's a lot to it that you know if I got into it it, it would go on for days you know well, not days but for hours me talking about it and kind of like all the strategies behind it and that's such a cool thing to have in a JRPG where, you know, they're notoriously known for being this kind of very slow, yeah, there's some strategy behind it, but in the end it was just kind of press attack, press, you know, this find the weakness and attack it with that. But this one, you know, you had to run around, you had to make sure you use the right moves, and uh, it was a very balancing act of uh, what creatures to use and if you should use yourself and all this kind of stuff, and I felt like it was very very well done surprisingly well done for a JRPG and to me that just screams that this genre is not exactly dead granted it's not the JRPG most people expect anymore um, it's it's very different it, it's you know so I don't know if you call it a JRPG still just because it was an RPG made in Japan but uh, yeah it, the combat is very good and I loved it uh, as for the story I'm I was actually a little bit disappointed with it in that, and, and uh, the reason I'm disappointed was because I had such high expectations. It was still a very good story. The world and music were beautiful. You know, I love traveling it. I played it like every day for a couple hours, and that's actually very rare for me. I, I do like marathon gaming, but I don't like playing, you know, I don't want to force myself to play games, and I never force myself to play Nina Kuni, and I play like every day, and that's actually pretty rare for me. Yeah, you know, for single player games, I I need to play with someone. Otherwise, I get bored. Otherwise, with single player games, I just take time. I take my time, you know, every other day or every two days or something like that. I'll 
uh, I'll play it up again. But Nino Kuni, I kept playing it. I finished all the side missions, no matter how repetitive they got sometimes. Uh, and, you know, I enjoyed it a lot. And it had a Pokemon aspect to it. And there's just so much to it that uh, the story, while I didn't quite feel the emotions I thought I felt like I was supposed to feel. And I'm not a guy who is, like, like tr a tryhard and, like, I don't feel anything for this guy or this girl or this person. Like, I, I like to feel. I like I like feeling emotional. I'm a I'm an emotional guy. Okay? I'm, I'm very emotional. But, uh, you know, I didn't quite feel that with Nina Kuni. I liked the characters a little bit, but I never really found myself connecting too much. Uh, the beginning was probably the saddest, to be honest, but... Uh, other than that, very good game. Um, I really highly recommend it, especially if you do like the JRPG era or genre, not era, or you know want to see some Studio Ghibli stuff. Uh, it's a very good game. If you have a PS3, I highly recommend it. Uh, next up, we have good old Tomb Raider. So Tomb Raider was a game that I, I don't have much experience with Tomb Raider, to be honest. Uh, all my experience is, you know, I just know about the triangle boobs, and I know that you raid tombs. I, I probably actually know more about the Uncharted series than I know Tomb Raider, and I've never played Uncharted either. I just watched the Let's Plays of them. So Tomb Raider was actually kind of a blank experience for me, and uh, it looked kind of cool. I You know, when they pitched it, they were, like, pitching that it's going to be Lara Croft growing up, and it, it does a pretty good job at that. Um, overall, I would say this game is just solid. Uh, it's a tri I would say it's a AAA title that's very solid. Like uh, it doesn't do anything too uh, special, so it's hard to give it something like Game of the Year. But if you, I feel like if you play the game, you will not be disappointed. You'll enjoy the game. You'll enjoy the characters. You know, you'll find yourself enthralled sometimes, and the combat is, you know, it's it's slightly different from most, you know, third-person shooters and stuff like that. Um, Overall, just kind of a solid game. I don't have too much to say about it because it's there's nothing special to really say about it. You know, Laura Croft. I'll say Laura Croft is a freaking badass. Like, I'm you know, it it didn't feel like completely fake either, but she just felt like a badass. Like, some you know, it was one of those moments where like you can, like you know when you see the heroes and they say those one-liners. A lot of times they feel cheesy, but uh, she didn't really say one-liners. But you know, it was just someone you want to look up to and go, wow, she's you know, she's awesome. She's cool and I can't really, I can't wait to see uh, the second game of Tomb Raider. I'll say that's the biggest thing going for it for me, was that, you know, there wasn't much Tomb Raiding, there wasn't, you know, it didn't wow me really in any specific way, but I will say that, like, I cannot wait for the second game, you know. There's not much really you can't ask for. It's kind of like Saints Row 3 was for me, where I love Saints Row 1 and 2, but Saints Row 3 just makes me want to see Saints Row 4. And see how they're gonna, you know, rank it up, and how they're gonna expand this world or this area. You know, with Nino Kuni, I loved it, but you know, I'm kind of done with it. I played 50 hours of it, and you know, I don't think that's a knock on Nino Kuni because it was a game that put it all out there. And Tomb Raider, it didn't quite do that, but I feel like I got my money was worth, and I want to see the next version, and I can't wait for it. Uh, anyways, yeah, so that's that's it for Tomb Raider. I definitely recommend it if you know if you want to get into the Tomb Raider series and uh i you know i think you'll be there waiting with me waiting for the second game and last but not least we have heart of the swarm so heart of the swarm probably isn't going to be game of the year to be honest uh i just if you guys don't know me starcraft is probably one of my top franchises of all time if not the top franchise for me uh it's a game i played ever since i was like six seven years old or something like that and you know i've i probably played this game the most not part of the swarm but just starcraft in general and all right well mostly brood war i'll say that i didn't play much starcraft 2 or at all but uh, heart of the swarm its campaign for an rts i i still think is very strong Star starcraft 2 in general has been very strong for a campaign wise like the missions are still rts like but they give you different objectives they they mix it up very well without losing its RTS aspect, and I think uh, StarCraft 2 and the, the current Blizzard has done a very good job of that, but the story is still cheesy. You know, Kerrigan is one of my favorite characters of all time, but in the end, she just she's just a love-struck girl trying to find Jim Raynor. Of course, 
you know, she works at the Zerg and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, in the end, Heart of the Swarm, very cheesy story. Great campaign, though. Um, still my favorite RTS to watch. And actually, the biggest thing I will say I have for Heart of the Swarm was, you know, I loved watching competitive Brood War. I watched some StarCraft 2, especially in the beta, Wings of Liberty. But in the end, I kind of got tired of it. It just got very boring. And Heart of the Swarm has added units that makes it just so much more fun, in my opinion. You know, everyone, I know, I don't know too much of the competitive scene. I haven't been following the community that much. But, you know, I know Widow Mines are kind of scary. The Oracle, the, the Viper, you know, creatures like that, or creatures, units like that. I feel like we're missing in in Wings of Liberty. You know, I ha I was one of those people that hated Marauders, Roaches, and uh, and stalk. Well, stalkers are okay, but I hated Marauders and Roaches because they're such simple units. They they didn't really have anything special to them. Marines are strong, but they're weak. Zerglings swarm you, but they're very weak as well. Um, you know, the the what else is there? The Firebat was close range. The Medic was. You know, very hard to control. The tanks were crazy. They're stupid in Brood War, but, you know, they're hard to use. Dragoons, very hard to use, but, you know, they did a lot of damage, and they're beefy, and zealots, and all this kind of stuff. You know, we're missing from Brood War. Like, yeah, I, I didn't even hate the whole auto-mining, or, uh, you know, the, the the rally points, and all that kind of stuff. I didn't hate them at all. I felt like they were smart, the, the multi-building, the more than 12 selection. I thought those were smart, needed additions to StarCraft 2, but the units were just so boring. Because, well, every like I, I think back to Wings of Liberty. What did you do for StarCraft? You kind of for Terran. I mean, you just got Marine Marauder, Medevac, and you just put them all into Group One, basically. And then for Protoss, you know, granted, Protoss was always a big ball of doom, but you just had Zealots, Stalkers, Colossi. All in one group, and then he had, and then Zerg was a little different, but I, you know, I don't like the Zerglings in in StarCraft 2, but you know, then you had the Zergling Infestor thing, right? You know, there was no Defiler Lurker, there was no like Mech that was that great, there was no, uh, you know, shuttle play. Oh, Protoss, sort of. I don't like the Warpin, but basically, what I'm trying to say is, I feel like Harvest Swarm competitive play is back. I love it. You know, I watched the MLG winter uh, competition stuff, and I thought it was fantastic. And I can't wait to see more of it. Like, I, I that's one thing I'll say hardest on. Like, the campaign was good, but not too special. But the the competitive play, I feel like, is back. You may be wondering. There's a certain game that came out most recently, and I will say I played this game, and I do think it's probably my favorite game so far. Uh, and the game, of course, I'm talking about is Bioshock Infinite. And, uh, you know, I don't have a slide for it because I don't have much to talk about. But uh, I'm going to be talking with one of my friends. We'll probably do like a spoiler cast or a review or something like that. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet. But uh, I will talk about the game. Uh, it is probably my favorite game so far. Probably fighting with Nina Kuni right now. It's hard, it's hard to say. Uh, but, yeah, Bioshock Infinite, I do know about it. I do know that it's probably going to be game of the year for a lot of people. And uh, I highly agree with that over Walking Dead, to be honest. But different year, different game, different time, whatever. Uh, and yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this Rams Like Daily, and hopefully it's not too long. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Adios.